Hi, Karen Alari here. Today we're going to be painting this colorful little scrub jay in a two video series. The first video is taken from a live session and in the second video we'll finish the painting as a more detailed tutorial. So let's get started. This is a little jay bird, a scrub jay from my backyard, from my garden. And um, I just I just love little jaybirds, and so I thought I'd I'd had this painting kind of rattling around in my head for a while. I saw oh from my porch I saw from my pa uh, back deck there was uh, a tree that oh I got paint all over me already a tree with a a few orangish reddish leaves left a few reddish orange leaves left on the tree and and I, I saw the, the jay flickering around my backyard and thought how pretty that would be. And then once I started painting it, well, that kind of rattled around in my head for a few days. And then once I started painting it, I, uh, I started playing around with different colors. And now I'm not really even sure I'm going to add the orange leaves. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. And I made him much better bigger like if this is actually the tree that I was painting from the backyard and he would have probably been about this big on there if I would painted him in real size so I didn't do that so it's experimental I'm just going to paint for a while and if, if uh, you have any comments or questions please let me know I'm using my usual palette my stay wet palette got a nice fresh piece of palette paper down here. I'm just working on getting some details on, on little Jay here. I know I want him to have a, a lot of detail and then I want the background to just be uh, more abstract and more about color and, and shape and I actually don't know what I want to do yet but I'm just experimenting. I've got in some some basic values. I've got a reference photo up here. I've got some basic values that I'm not super happy with. This is too dark in here. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play around a little bit. I think I'll start with a a slightly bigger size of a brush. I don't know, this is maybe quarter, three eighths of an inch across flat brush. I don't know if you can see my palette. I'm going to try to move this down here into something a little a little warmer and a little lighter. So I'm going to use complementary colors to work into my neutral. So I've got some purple and dioxazine purple and some Indian yellow and some white. And I can't decide if I want I want his shadow area to be warm or cool. So I'm experimenting. This is a true experiment, which most of my painting is. Uh, I, I worked about, I don't know, I'd say probably three or four hours. Uh, well, probably I did some background for an hour or two one day, and I worked probably a couple hours yesterday. And, uh, you know, if you follow my videos at all, you know, sometimes I do things really detailed and sometimes I do things much uh, much more loose and sort of focused on color instead of detail but I love my little birds that I watch all the time through my back window so so uh, I want to get him a little more detail I know that this will dry darker and uh, so I'm keeping that in mind. I'm just going to put, mm, I'm going to warm up this bottom part too, almost with a green, because it's going to have some reflected color from the uh, branch that he'll eventually be sitting on. So I want to change that color a bit. That also gives him more form. So I've got that, and I've got that. I want to get him up to feeling of brownness. I'm pretty happy with that. I know for in order for his 
light side here to stand out even more. I'm going to need to put it against a dark. I mean, I could choose just to have his light side fade into um, fade into the you know kind of lose that edge by having that not so dark over there. But I'm experimenting, and that's that's really the fun of. Um, of acrylics is that I can experiment like crazy and if I don't like it I can just paint over it and do it again and and that really frees up your creativity when you're not like so focused down what I'm doing is adding some dark against his light side and then something a little bit lighter against his dark side just to make him pop a bit for right now and I may decide later that uh, that I want this edge to disappear. I want this to be a lost edge, not a found edge, but I haven't really decided on that yet one way or another. I love these little jays. They hang out in my back. I feed the birds and the critters and the squirrels. I feed them all in my backyard, and, and they come and visit me every day and keep me company. Got some usually mostly phthalo blue for this guy. So it's a real rich blue color. I'm trying to get this combination of seeing the light, but also seeing the color. And uh, and playing with that. Finding this this uh, this light area too is really a challenge. Getting that shadow in there. And getting a difference between the white that is on his lower chest here that kind of defines his shape. So here's a ridge that comes across like this because the light's coming from this way. And I'm, we'll make that more clear later when we're doing uh, the light on the leaves and trees and whatnot, the branches. But... This really, if I can get this value right, if I can get this situation right, it'll define his roundness, his round little belly chest area. There, I think jays are so, oh, they're just kind of they're almost military to me. They're very kind of no nonsense and, and busy and they have things to do. I uh, anthropomorphize my, my birds, don't I? Moving into some, I love, I've been using a lot of Indian yellow lately. I used to always only use Hansa yellow medium. Switch from cadmium yellow because um, of the whole cadmium thing. But um, I'm really liking Indian yellow too. It's a really warm, it's here on my palette. It's, it's warm and uh, when you add white to it, it gets very yellow. And it's kind of opaque anyway I don't know experimenting art is always about experimenting isn't it I'm trying to get this angle there's, there's a real angle to his chest stops a little bit lower about here that gets that puffy chest thing going on oops sorry I keep knocking my knocking this thing I've got I've got you on my laptop sitting next to me here. I didn't draw him in first. Um, you know that's one way to do it. You can draw draw your your image in more you know distinctly and like even kind of trace it or whatever like that. And that's a much faster way to do it, unless you're super good at drawing, which I'm not. Um, but I don't, I don't really like to do it so much because a lot of my fun in painting is just, is just what I'm doing now, like exploring this little creature that I'm painting, looking at him and exploring how he's formed and the colors and the shapes. And for me, that's, Ah, I don't know, maybe even more than three quarters of the fun is just uh, taking the time and going over it 
and I could probably switch to a smaller um, brush to do that, but, but I don't really want to. Anyway, for me, that's the fun. I'm not really as much looking for the product as I'm looking for uh, enjoying the process. This is way too light down there, but I'm, I'm kind of throwing that in as a base because I want to add... Um, I want to make that a little bit lighter. And sometimes when you get too much dark going on, if you put down some uh, white and either let that dry or come in right on top of it, you can you can get a lighter area. If I do that lighter area, I also want a darker area. He goes from... I was watching these guys in the sun the other day this is a photo, but I, I spend a lot of time watching them, too. And when this, the color of their blue feathers is so amazing, it's kind of iridescent. When it gets in the sunlight, it tends to almost go kind of blue-green, kind of um, just a really pretty color. And so part of what I'm trying to do is is get to that color, which is going to be hard because it's a very light color um, and I could do it with some glazing I could find myself get out my glazing stuff maybe and do it that way but I don't I don't tend to use glazing a lot I don't know why I'm just I don't know why probably lazy don't want to have to mess with mediums and stuff but I know that here on the edge where he's really light even though it doesn't really show in this picture, I know that he goes kind of a blue-green color, like like the color of the North Umpqua River almost. And then as he moves inward, away from the light, and that turns, it gets to be a warmer blue. So from the thalo with a little yellow, and then into adding a little bit of ultramarine to that mix. Like I say, these are things that psh, they don't show, but it's part of my fun process. My enjoyment of painting is discovering these amazing little transitions uh, in the colors. Breaking the bigger spaces up into little spaces. He's got this really dark shadowed area, which I've got it a little too dark. Got some ultramarine blue, some Indian yellow, and then I'm going to add some alizarin crimson to that. And that's to, that's going to give me this muddy sort of neutralish brownish color. And then I think I'm going to add a little more blue to that to cool it down. I just want a sort of a, a darker neutral in here because this area under his chin is actually his white feathers in shadow. I'm using the side of this flat brush and I'm just uh, really lightly touching it to the canvas to get and trying to leave some of those other layers I've built up underneath. So not to cover it all. But I'm 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 basically just kind of shifting the value a little bit. Um what I see how when I put it down here, it's not dark enough. I want a slightly darker area right in there. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna add a little more ultramarine blue to that. So I think I'm happy with this slightly lighter value, but I want to have a variation to that because I'm still trying to get his chest to look really kind of puffy and, you know, how they are. Rounded, rounded, that's puffy, rounded, okay. And so I'm going to put in some of these colors too. This is my reflected light from the branch. I got this blue in the shadow over here, and I that value's good for his his beak to stand out against it. But um, I want some of this rich color in there, just like as rich as I can get, just about. 
Shadow is a great place to put rich color. Sometimes we think of shadows as, you know, dull areas. And we put grays in there and blacks and whatnot. But shadows are really the opportunity to get some nice, rich color. Transparent color, preferably. And uh, phthalo blue, I'm getting some shadow on the bottom side of his tail there. Phthalo blue is a very transparent color. The shadow comes about part way down here. It's a very transparent color as well as a very rich color. And you know me, I love color, so I'm going to push it whenever I can. He's got, he's getting this blue over to the back side of his head here. That gives some roundness to his head, too. Because again, we got the light coming down this way. I'm going to get a little bit of this darker blue to show the way there's kind of the shadow area underneath some of these feathers. Like I said, I don't always do this kind of detailed work. In fact, anymore, I, I haven't been doing detailed work much at all. Yeah, his, I really want to get this area where his chest is where he's got his chest poked out like that. I'm using white with a little bit of uh, Indian yellow in here. You know, white, titanium white by itself is a very cool color. It's kind of chalky and cool. And so if you use it on its own, it tends to make things look chalky. And uh, one technique I like to use is, so I'm coming in here with this, this, this has got some Indian yellow in, so I don't know if you can tell, but I don't know if you can, if you do this with your fingers or if you, I think you can, get closer on your screen but I'm not sure uh, so if I come here with some Indian yellow I'm using acrylics of course and then um, while it's still wet you kind of you know have to use a good amount of paint or it'll dry immediately but while it's still wet I can brush in some of this pure white and it's still going to mix with the color below and uh, but it's going to brighten it up a little bit because one of the biggest things that we work with in acrylics is the fact that they dry darker. And this is especially true of the uh, lighter colors, like these colors I'm using right now. And so you just have to be aware of that, that you may have to come back a couple of times after it dries and readjust, re-lighten up your, uh, your lights till they till they stay the right value. Got some of this coming over there, and then he's got a little bit here. I want this the area under here to stay a little darker, because uh, that's the way it is in the picture. I got. I think I'm getting happier with with the little guy. My grandfather's name was. J, so I have sort of a uh, sort of a soft spot for J's. <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll make up a neutral. I'm, you know, great way to make neutrals or darks is just to use your complementary colors. Um, I'm using purple here and some quinacridone gold, which is one of my favorite colors. That makes a really rich brownish purple color. If I wanted to take out the brown of it, I would add some more blue to it, which I'm probably going to do in a sec. I'm going to get some of that behind there. He's got his leg. They come from clear back here. And then he's, he's really kind of squatting on this branch. So his leg is coming in this way. And I don't know exactly. I can't really tell what he's doing, but obviously he's going to have to have his feet over this branch. And I think I'm going to pull the branch. Added some uh, 
blue, ultramarine blue to that mixture and a little white to, uh, to give it sort of a neutral, a neutral color. Um, oh, what was I talking about? Sometimes you can't necessarily do what is going on in your reference photo because it looks funny. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. Um, so don't 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 be afraid to adjust things the way he was sitting on this branch with his legs tucked up underneath him doesn't to me really describe the way uh, the way Jays are they're kind of they're kind of perkier than that aren't they they're always kind of perky anyway so I'm going to try to adjust that by giving a little space under his belly and then readjusting where his branch is coming that he's sitting on. It's maybe going to be a little further down this way. We'll see if we like that. Of course, once it gets under him, it's going to be in shadow. And once it gets out, it'll be a little more in light. Eh, that can get to be tricky because, um, oh, sorry, I keep bumping the laptop. That can be a little tricky because he he's still got to look like he's not going to fall over. He's got, he's got the right balance under him. So I might revisit that a few times until I feel like he's, uh, he's got the right gesture. They call that the gesture of his body to wear. He feels like he's in balance. But one thing these guys have, which I really love, they look like they're wearing little bloomers. Their, their feathers come down a little ways onto their, their leg. So thinking about value more than color right now and just getting some, getting some shapes in there. And maybe that's his back leg back there. Maybe this is his front leg. Maybe this is in shadow, and we'll come back and play with that more. At this point, I kind of want to get some background in there to to see what how he's going to fit into his environment. And like I was saying before, they um, so it's, know, it's really hard probably for you guys to see. Here's a little closer view of where we are with him. Hi, Jay. He loves peanuts. I put out peanuts for them every morning. And uh, if I don't put them out first thing in the morning, I hear about it. <laughs> okay. What was I going to do? Oh, so this was actually a tree in the background. But like I said, I've enlarged him so much now that the now it looks more like a twiggy bush. I don't hate that. What I really liked about the tree concept, and like I was saying, I I could see the, the tree in sunlight with a few of these or, red-orange uh, leaves that I thought were really exciting against the blue bird. So, yeah, I'm, I'm taking some lizard and crimson, some naphthal red medium, and a little bit of Hansa yellow medium, which is the yellow I like to use that, and Indian yellow. But in this case, I'm going to do that. And a little bit of white. Not too much, because that's going to immediately make it go opaque. But I just want to see if I did add some of these red leaves, what it would look like. I love acrylics for this. I can just, I can just meander through my painting. This is some pure red, and this is some pure, this is some uh, yellow that I'm going to put on top. I like mixing, uh, one way you can get acrylics to kind of start mimicking, uh, or doing some, not mimicking, I hate that idea, but doing some of the things that oils do is by mixing them right on the canvas and using a good amount of paint. I see a lot of people when they're painting with acrylics, um, 
with tiny little, tiny little bits of paint on their palette and they're brushing and brushing and brushing and brushing and brushing and then they're just like, they have hardly any paint on their brush. And um, that's, that's not so much fun and you're not going to be able to do any blending whatsoever because that thin of a layer of acrylics is just going to dry. So I'm not really, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing right here, but I'm just getting, I'm putting some, I'm putting some of these colors up to see if I want to introduce that color. Because I introduced the purple in the background, which I wasn't initially um, planning to do, but I did yet anyway. And I liked it, but I may change it entirely. You never know. I, I, I introduced it because when I was looking at the photo, I could see the shadows. This was a green tree in the background. And I could see it's very dark and I could see some purple in the in the shadows in the distant parts of the tree so I just I uh, expanded on that you know the biggest thing for me um, in learning to paint and enjoying painting more when I first started to paint I was really uptight about it I was really like oh I have to this painting has to be perfect it has to turn out and when I get to a point in my painting where it was just looking like crap and I hated it. I would just kind of close up inside and clamp down and, and, and just get embarrassed at, at what I was doing. <laughs> does that make it, does anybody else do that? And I, I stopped having fun, you know, I would push through it and I'd get back up there and I'd, I'd just do it. But um, at one point I realized, you know, what in the world am I getting, you know, so uptight about it's, I can redo anything on here if I mess something up, quote unquote, I can do it again. I did it once, I did it again. So well, just trying to encourage you, don't let those things get in your way. Don't let your feelings of, oh my God, I'm going to mess this up, or I don't have the skills to do that, or I'm afraid I'm going to fail and it's going to look stupid. Don't let that get in your way. Just play, you know? Play is what it's all about. I think I'm going to work on trying to... Uh, reshape these uh, branches a little bit. So I'm going to go in with a dark shadow color. I'm going to start with some phthalo blue since I use so much phthalo in the bird. And uh, of course the complement to a blue is an orange. And I'm going to decide what I think. And sunlight's coming from this way. So this side of the branches is going to be shadowed. And I, I put them in first just with a, a, a white with some Indian yellow to start getting some ideas. So we've got warm highlights. That means we've got cool shadows, right? I hate that. So, but see, you try it. I'm going to go for a purple instead. And I, I had somebody comment on one of my videos the other day, I think it was a video about, oh, there you go again with your signature purple. <laughs> and I thought, I have a signature purple, really? I do love purple. Purple's one of my favorite colors. Oh, my newest thing, I went to I went to a, a place over the weekend, a, a crystal show, anyway, and I bought a bunch of these. Let me see them. I bought a bunch of these. <laughs> They're tumbled stones of different, like, semi-precious, I don't know what this is. I took all the little papers that told me, but I don't know what they are. But I have them under my, um, in my easel now, so maybe they'll give me energy. Here's the purple one. Some kind of, are they pretty? I love them, and I like to put them in my pocket and uh, when I'm taking walks and stuff. Just give me whichever one speaks to me for the day. Anyway, so evidently I have a signature purple that I like to use a lot, and I'm okay with that. So this is a really bright purple. Well, it's not super bright, but it's pretty bright, and I'm using it as a shadow color, and I don't really want, I want it to be a little bit more neutral. So adding a little more yellow to that, and I'm gonna add a little more ultramarine blue to it. Push it a little more towards the blue, a little more towards the neutral, and I think I'm gonna add a little more white, because I don't want it to be uh, too big of a value shift there and we'll see see don't you love acrylics just 
don't worry about you just don't have to worry about anything that you're doing because you can come back and redo it so I'm going to do some of this for now because I kind of like the value and I may change it I don't know but what I wanted to focus on was the forms now <clears throat> another part of this painting for me beyond just little J here was the sort of stained glass effect of these branches up in with the light behind them and I'm going to switch over to my liner brush it's just sort of this long thin brush and I like to um, use a liner brush for uh, for little twigs like this because I can get a nice thin line and I can get a sort of a uh, organic line just by kind of stopping and starting so yeah anyway I was kind of taken by the sort of stained glass effect of these branches to the trees they really um, kind of did that for me so what I'm gonna do is because I'm gonna keep this dark over here and this area is, is light over here I'm gonna put my darks against the light and my lights against the dark and uh, see how that goes biggest you know again talking about that the creativity um, using our minds creatively and how we can encourage that um, and one of the mindsets that really encourages creativity is the what if mindset so you know what if I put purple over here and yellow over there what's that gonna do you know just try it doesn't hurt to try it okay so this side is light much of a slightly larger brush I'm sitting down today more I I try to stand up more when I'm when I'm painting because you can step back a lot stepping back is so important to be able to get um, get a distance view on what you're doing I kind of do like the red it's kind of poppy isn't it what do you guys think is it going the right direction it's kind of with color you know you want to integrate your color throughout the painting so you if you put color in one spot you want to have it in at least three spots and all those kind of things so I'm gonna to have to integrate that blue throughout the rest of the painting um, which I will do at some point we got blue sky we can use that to integrate the blue and um, I want to keep this dark around him over here let's put some more dark so there's no way I'm going to finish this today because it's I'm really focusing on experimentation and letting letting the ideas sort of percolate in my mind for a while not trying to necessarily be product focused but be process focused which is just more fun I think we got some branch going back this way all right so I know I want to keep dark over here and that makes him pop out more I think he's really popping out now I like that yeah I'm liking that okay what else do I want to do so obviously that green I'm just that's called painting the negative space when you paint around something as opposed to painting the thing so I'm painting this negative space around the bird which defines his shape better and helps him to pop 
But now in doing that, I'm going to have to integrate that. I'm just, you know, I'm not worrying about what I'm painting. I'm just getting a value in there so that he pops more. But now I'm going to have to integrate that into the painting. And because I didn't start with a set thought, I didn't start with a set drawing. This is a, this is like a figure it out as I go kind of painting, which not all my paintings are. Sometimes I spend a lot of time in Photoshop beforehand and um, playing with that, moving elements around, changing colors and values and whatnot. Um, so I do that experimentation in Photoshop, but today I'm doing the experimentation in uh, in the paint on the canvas, which, again, I can do because I'm working in acrylics. The green I'm using today is called Hooker's Green. You can also just, in, in the past, I've always just mixed my greens from either ultramarine or thalo blue, and my hands are yellow, or my quinacridone gold, or my Indian yellow. But having a mixed green just kind of uh, makes the process go more quickly. And then I adjust that green by adding yellows or blues. Or You notice I'm not, the foliage I'm painting in this doesn't have anything to do with, this is a holly bush that he's sitting in in that picture. And, and uh, that's not what I'm painting. I'm painting this other tree that was in my backyard that just had a few little red leaves on it. And it's also going to have a few little green leaves left on it because I want to get this dark around him. And this green against blue, I think, is really pretty. I'm liking that. It's kind of kind of soft and subtle. So adding more yellow to that green and a little bit of white just to get some shapes in here. I'm playing around with it. Got some purple down there, which I like. I like that purple juxtapositioning there, making that interesting. I think I want a really bold, I want a really bold dark in some of these branches. So I don't use black. I just don't like uh, the muddiness it creates. So... I will usually make my very darkest darks from phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, and quidacridone gold. And those are all fairly transparent colors. And I can push the, the color of the dark uh, to purple or to, to blue or to brown, depending on, on what I want to do. And I have more control over it. Uh, I'll put that in here. I somehow just want, remembering the light's coming from this way, I want some kind of a form. He's got his, his gesture of his head. I'm thinking about, do I, want, do I want the form? I think I want a form that comes around and brings us back, sort of a, you know, you got to think about the path the eye takes and create a, uh, a path and something interesting going on. And I've kind of got it going here and you're following around. I don't know, see what, see what we want. I, I, know, I know he's looking down this way and I'm a little worried about that and I want to bring the eye back up. So I'm gonna start down here. I may change this. Drastically, I don't know, because it's acrylic, so I can. I'm using a lot of paint and just my big flat brush. I'm altering the way it's hitting the canvas so that I have a sort of an organic form there. I just want to get that contrast going there, and I'll lighten it up here later, most likely. And, you know, I don't want to get too spot on. I don't want to create a little circle around him. 
which I tend to do, but thicken this up a little bit. Don't want to take your eye off there. I don't really want to. Let's try one through here. So I kind of like that way that's going. We'll see. I'm going to add some sunlit side to it. Because the sunlight is going to come here. So I think this kind of might solve my problem with my, the fact that I've got this little, this big huge bird and then I had all these little tiny things in the background. I think what I'm gonna have is this one, this one tree that's bigger, that's kind of more in the foreground. And then um, it'll be the one that has just these sparse little red leaves and a few green leaves, and then I'll have this little tracery in the background. Anyway, that's my idea, or I might get rid of it entirely. I don't know. Just don't know. Never know where it's gonna go. So I kind of like the I kind of like the sh the forms that's making with the uh, branch behind him. It's looking really busy right now. I'm definitely gonna have to make it more calm and i think i'm going to do that with some sky because that's going to bring back my blue too to uh you know integrate the blue of the bird so negative painting gosh i love i love painting negatively so you know the way this form of this branch is kind of clunky and not very cool not very nice. I can come back with the negative painting, in other words, painting around the branch, and I can thin it out or create new shapes however I want to, and it, it really gives it a more interesting look than just to have everything painted positively, you know, just but painting around the things, especially when you're going for this sort of uh, stained glass kind of a look. I'd like to, I want to get an effect of the stained glass look. And so I'm probably coming in too soon with the, the sky color. I, I need more of the branch color in there, but that's okay because it's acrylics and I can redo it whenever I want. Getting some sky holes in here, lightening this up. I'd gone really purple with the sky uh, as a first idea. And now I'm coming back with more of this thalo blue color like the bird to kind of simplify it because I've got way too much going on and to um, sorry, I'm thinking. This is the biggest problem area right now. I need to decide what I want to do with that. If it's going to be green, I think it's going to be a green foreground bush. Ooh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's going to be a red bush. Let's try that. Can we try a red bush? What the heck? What if, right? Let's try an orange bush in there. I don't want it to be the same as that, and I want it to be in the background. I don't know. Well, see, the beauty is I can try it, and if I don't like it, I'll cover it up. I'm going to start with a mixed orange. I've got some that orange here. Again, I used to mix all my uh, secondary colors, but I'm tending more and more to have a mixed one on the palette and then I can adjust it. So I'm adding uh, yellow to it, I'm adding 
quinacridone gold to it. I'm adding white to it. I want something a little more neutral than the red I'm using there. But orange, of course, is the complementary color to blue. And will most likely make our little fellow really pop. I remember, and I want that to stay dark over there. But I just don't want to, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, him I want, him I want to be um, detailed. But the rest of it is, ooh, I mixed, picked up some of that black and that, or that dark that I got there, and that just neutralized that orange a little bit. That's pretty cool. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Eh, I lost it. Oh, well. Painting uses, especially when you're trying to paint creatively like I'm doing today, it uses the right side of your brain. And talking and forming linear thoughts uses the left side of your brain. And so it's just super challenging to paint and talk at the same time. And that's my excuse today. Oh, I know what I was saying. I was talking about how I'm just randomly laying color in here because um, I don't want any detail over here. I just I just want some color notes that are gonna make this guy pop. So that's what I'm just laying those in and feeling them. This is a you know it's a feeling process. It's a try this, try that. See how that works. Feel your way through it. Don't judge it. Oh, that's the biggest thing. While you're doing your painting, just paint. You can always come back later and judge. So I don't really know what that is. It's just some orange color over there. And then I'm going to add some some color that sort of some greenish color but but sort of in fall color green so i've got uh indian yellow with a little of my mixed hookers green if you've watched any of my videos you know this is one of the layering techniques i like to use and this is a scruffy old uh bristle brush and I just get a good amount of paint on it and then I, I roll it around to get sort of an organic uh, um, organic brush strokes. So just just some options. This is some a really neutral greenish color. Just putting in layers. I don't know what I'll do with those or if I'll keep them or not, but I want to get this these colors layered on there and see how I like them. Kind of like them. I'm going with some dark... Um, Ooh, that could have been a catastrophe. Kind of was. I just got phthalo blue all over me. <laughs> if you know phthalo blue, it's a very strong staining color. Okay. I'm going to make some more dark. Phthalo blue, quinacridone gold. Uh, alizarin crimson. And my liner brush again. And if you use a liner brush, it's really green. I need more red in that. If you use a liner brush, um, it works better if you get the paint thinned down. Uh, I just use water and thin it down enough so that it's uh, thinner. 
using that liner brush and creating a edge to it by stroking it back and forth in the palette and then I can just bring it up stops and starts creates these little um, twig like forms and I'll do this a lot in a foliage area if, if I'm painting this way which I am today um, this create the layers so I've got some color down in there and I'm putting some layers of twigs and then I'll come back with some more layers of trees of trees leaves just lots of layers This is going to have to be a little thicker there. There we go. I haven't decided if, yeah, that's going way over there. And that needs, I need to bring the eye back this way too this branch so I've got coming in I want to keep that especially having him uh, looking down to the edge like that I really want to keep that the eye moving around Adding a little of that dark, dark to his eye. He's got uh, sort of some gold in that eye, brownish color, which I may or may not do. That's just a touch here. Get that overhang. Some of these in here. Got some texture in his eye around here. Got some. Since I have this dark in my hand, I'm adding a little dark. He's got his leg. There. It's in here. And then I'll usually add some warmer color to that and some white to that, uh, what I was using on the branches. Some red, some yellow. Always add a warming color when you add white to go to a lighter value. You need that warming color uh, generally, unless you're going for cool lights. But um, generally, you need that warming color too. Because that uh, titanium white is very cool putting some twigs in the background so I've got some layers here I've got sort of a foreground bush over here I've got this tree I've got something purple going on in the background so this is in front these are behind here so I got to think about that I don't I think I actually want those twigs up there. I think I'm going to. Eh, I don't know. Don't know what I'm going to do. Um, oh, I'm going to put some really light. Stuff over here too. Sunlight's coming this way, remember? So this side you know you always got to think about that when you're painting it's like remind yourself over and over again sometimes people will put a sticky pad with an arrow on it um, reminding them which direction 
the light is and think about when where that light's going to be hitting you know and that's people people to say uh, tell me oh i love the way you get light in your paintings and that's how you do it you just got to keep it in mind and then um, be careful to watch your values you've got to get enough value shift that you see the light and if you don't you won't see light i'm putting a few twigs in here in this area that's just going to be uh some random bush here so i like to to create a movement by using my liner brush and and literally getting some some random movement going on it's so easy to get tight in your especially when you're doing something uh, realistic like this little bird it's so easy to just get super tight in in your painting and at least for me it is and what i found that i really like is this this contrast between an area of the painting that's super um this super detailed and then areas that are almost abstract and it are more about color and value than they are about um, detail a lot of people t um, you know talk to me about painting more loosely and that's something I'm working on and one thing that I, I would say about that is holding your brush loosely. That sounds pretty straightforward and kind of obvious, but if you hold your brush loosely and, and don't be precious about it, don't step back, get and don't drop your painting on the paint on the floor, but step back and get get a long distance look at what you're doing and move around your canvas so do do some um i know this is behind this branch here so i don't want to go in front of it but i do want to get some of this lighter so the sunlight's coming in and it's hitting this this random bush a few spaces but i don't want to get i want to maintain the dark right around him so that he's you know he pops and that don't need that there darken that up don't need the don't need anything very light down in these corners um because i can always come back in and reshape it I can always soften some of these edges right here. Anything that catches my eye, I'm probably going to soften. And if it's too dry, I'll come back in with another layer if I don't like it. But I also want a little bit of something really juicy. Mm, let's choose orange and add a little magenta to it this time, see what I get. I want to see brush strokes i don't want to see leaf well they're going to kind of look like leaves but i want i want to see some i want some movement some activity some something exciting so i'm uh again mixing on If you get enough paint going on, you can mix right on there, on your on your canvas, and get more variations of color. 
So I'm creating a little area right here. It's going to have a little more value contrast. Just to give, I don't want this area to be flat, which, which it will be if everything is the same value and similar colors and similar, uh, that's what I'm thinking, um, values, similar colors, similar edges. And I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to add an area that's got a little more value shift to kind of balance out and to, to create depth here in this area. So I added some dark darks and yellow, Indian yellow and white against those dark darks. I'm just adding shape. I'm just adding brush strokes. I don't want polka dots. Uh, I want to connect things. See there, there's enough paint that that creates a, a blend by adding it on top. And I get intermediary colors there, which is kind of like you can do in oils and you can do that here too but in acrylics you just have to work with more paint and you have to work quickly I, I mean immediately you can't let it sit for a while and then come back a lot of times when I paint I'm my eyes are actually kind of unfocused and that helps me That helps me to see kind of the big picture. And I also like to step back a lot. Oh, and by, oops, sorry guys. By stepping back just now, I saw something that I really hate and which I really tend to do a lot. And that's these parallel lines. Same, same shape, same distance apart. And uh, I, ah. I do that a lot. So I'm going to have to change that because it's not good. I really I really like the way this came back over here. But this just has to go at a different angle. It can't go at the same angle as that is going. So come back in with my dark. I'm going to need to mix more of it. Mm, haven't gone enough. Need more dark. Now, see, now I've gone to the same angle as that, and I don't want that. I think I can just be a little subtle. I think I can stay there, but maybe just come up at this angle instead. And maybe even I may I might be able to keep that one based up here a little more. Maybe. I think it, that might have helped. But yeah, I have a real tendency to get really symmetrical in things. I went over the edge of him there. I guess I did that before. I, I can always paint. No worries. Okay. Hmm. All right. Let me get some of this green background that's keeping him dark and I think that's going to connect up into this purple duck background I don't know a lot of times what I do is put a whole lot more detail in and then pull the detail back out you know this kind of painting is not for everybody because it's not quick you know if I'd 
drawn in my design, decided in, in advance what I wanted to do. Uh, this would go a lot quicker, but I actually do it for this, for the process. I love to spend my day experimenting and painting. Once I gave myself the permission to fail, the permission that everything I do doesn't have to be a beautiful work of art, and that what I'm really doing is enjoying my life, enjoying the activity, you know. So I can use this dark I'm introducing to create um, First of all, I have to decide if I'm keeping these twigs over here to create a different movement. So I've got my movement going this way. i got to decide how much of this dark I'm going to put in. I'm going to start with more dark back here. And then I'm going to um, come back over with some lights. Again, the benefits of acrylics as I can do this as many times as I want and it just creates more interest and more layers because it is bright sunshine but there's shadows back there too I'm just using my hooker's green and some ultramarine blue and I'm adding a tad of alizarin crimson to it to give it um, neutralize it a bit again we're talking about creating a little bit of contrast around in this area in order to give it some form so I'm creating little kind of little holes going back to this area here We'll see. I know it's definitely too muddy. I mean, too busy right now. And we're going to work on that. de it. I like that purple up there. I don't know. It's a lot. I've got purple, red, orange, blue. I always do that. I've got yellow. It's a rainbow. I love rainbows. Let's see. Okay, where was I? All right. So I've got some more dark around him. I've got more of these things going on in the background. I've got that going on. Let's let's put some more sky in there. Some more negatively painted sky. I like that purple though. I'm just not sure I like all this twiggy stuff in the background. I think I want some simplicity here. And I know I want that blue. Coming back in with the negative painting like this, you can really create some interesting shapes that are kind of organic and accidental, happy accidents as it were. As the saying goes, of course, what you're really watching out for is lines, symmetry, um, all those things. I want it to feel organic, and it can't feel organic if it's a bunch of symmetrical shapes or lined up shapes that's pretty cool I think I don't know what do you think yay nay I'm gonna add some purple I really like that purple but I'm gonna make it slightly redder let's try that let's add a little bit of red to it what if, the what if mindset, hugely important part of creativity. What if I put more purple back here, 
but it's a little redder, maybe to give more of a transition into my reds down here. And what is this? I have no idea. Maybe it's a lavender bush back there. I just don't know. Add some of it over here too, which just kind of gives me a balance. Let's lighten that up. Add a little more red. Remember adding warmer colors as you add the light white. All this is behind the tree branches. Okay, let's see if we can. I love these colors here. Let's see if we can't uh, blend that in. I'll use my hooker's green and some. This is a. I keep a pile. I, I change out my palette. And I transfer the rest of the piles of paint to the next um, palette. And I'll usually. My white gets all messed up like that at the end of the session. I'll just kind of mix it up in to a. Uh, slightly neutralized white and then I can use that when I don't need to use pure white and I want to get some sort of a little bit more neutral colors probably going to be too neutral yeah that's looking like gray and I wanted something I want to use it anyway especially right now it's so gray isn't it I add some phthalo blue and some yellow to that, that will green it right back up. I'll add some bright white this time. What if in here, what if, what if I bring a little more of this lighter color green? I yeah, probably even like that. I'm gonna add some more of those bright red leaves too at some point. But this is what I wanted to address. This edge. Branch is coming in front of it. So we can get back that. So this area that I painted not too long ago, it's fairly thick and it's starting to dry, but it's not completely dry. So that's that's what you got to be careful of with with acrylics. Is it's real easy to wait for an area to dry so that you can do the next layer. But what you don't want to do is get starting to get it to kind of clump up, which it will do if it's partly dry. So you just want to be careful of that. So I need to leave that area for a while. Just getting colors that I like. I think I like, I think I can. I think I need to take a little break. Come back to Jay another time. And let it sit for a while and percolate and see what it is he needs or doesn't need or where I need to start all over. But this is where he stands right now. This side up. Bye from Jay. See you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed that live session. Be sure and join me for the second video where I'll finish up this little painting as a more detailed tutorial with close-up views of both the painting and the palette. See you there.